The consumer has one very big problem right now, that's debt. And on top of that, interest rates they've never felt before in their lifetime. In today's video, we're going to get into just that. Welcome, truth seekers. You've landed in the right place. I want to bring you what others simply can't. So join this grassroots movement of nearly 300,000 people. Hit that subscribe and the notification beside it so that we can conquer this together. Speaking of which, have you seen what's going on with interest rates specifically linked to the debt? I'm going to show you how unaffordable things have become today. I've got some charts to show you, but I want to cover this first. Fed says tighter credit conditions to weigh on U.S. growth. So, of course, equal and opposite reaction. You can see that, of course, as they increase interest rates, that's going to disable people's ability to buy what they did before when interest rates were super low. That goes for corporations, that goes for everybody. Extent of additional policy tightening to depend on the data. FOMC will determine the extent of firming meeting by meeting, meaning they do not know exactly what's going to happen, supposedly. And so they want to make sure that they keep everybody on their toes so that uh, they can essentially bring inflation back down to that 2%. And we will see how that all goes. But Fed officials are saying that rates may need to go higher to tame inflation, and that includes Waller, okay? And you can see Barkin as well. So there are a couple examples, not everybody in the FOMC, but you look generally at what they said, and it had been that probably somewhere around 5.6% for the Fed funds rate would be needed to bring inflation down to the 2% goal. 2%, mind you, not until, you know, we're talking 2024 and beyond. So what does that mean when you're talking about credit cards, car loans, and mortgages? Well, that's a problem now because we're talking about years out. What's an issue here is there's a disconnect in between what happens with the market, market signaling, the bond market, as well as what's going on with like the stock market and things like there's this huge disconnect right now and i think it's a problem and i don't think people realize this why because the bond market is signaling a recession the bond market is yelling and screaming that you've got a serious problem that historically has ended very badly the stock market on the other hand is saying it's 1999 and i'm gonna party and so what I can tell from this is that it's probably the case of something snapping and breaking. We had the banking crisis that started to unfold. And I think that's one of the issues here that they're trying so desperately to like pray, hope and pray we could just make it through this point, cut interest rates down so that a lot less companies will be affected. But the regional banks are still under this heavy pressure today and they are desperate. There are many regional banks that have been lending for commercial real estate. And we know that commercial real estate, retail and office have a very big problem ahead for the foreseeable future. In fact, how many businesses do you know that are saying we're going to bring even more people to the office than before in the financial sector? not going to happen in the tech sector, not going to happen. Hybrid working is becoming the new norm. And that's going forward. That doesn't mean they can't get away with like living. I know somebody that lives literally like three to four hours away from where they need to be at work because during 2020, they said, well, I can work from wherever I want. Oh, but then everybody started calling them back in in 2022, let's say. Oh, well, how are you going to get all the way back downtown from where you live? Well, that's a problem. And so that's what's going on here. For a lot of people, this is going to disrupt a lot of people's lives, okay? Commercial real estate, regional banks directly connected. They have, I believe it's somewhere around that 50%. I've shown you the number. Let's just say 50% of all the loans originating with these smaller uh, regional banks. And then, of course, connected in with that, the rates that we've got here, you, you got a problem. You got a very big problem, okay? So then we look at it. You could see buying conditions for houses, vehicles, and large household durables. You know, obviously, the, depending on which one we're looking at here. But it is very clear that uh, for the buyer, when you look at the buyer, the consumer, they have seen better conditions than where we were 
last year. That's what they are experiencing and, and suggesting. I don't know if I can agree with that, but anyway, that this is like looking out, looking out into the future. Oh, I think it's going to be better next year. So where they're getting that, I don't know, because prices are still elevated uh, and have gone higher on basically everything. But here you can see it. U.S. consumer year ahead inflation expectations are the lowest since 2021. Okay, so that's the the like the surveys, the data. That's what it shows. But we look at the reality. Do you want do you want reality, or do you want like things that they'll generally show you in the mainstream? Well, you came here. I think you probably want reality. You're a truth seeker. Let me show you something. Very obscure, but I love this kind of stuff, and I've been bringing this all the while over the years. Slumping cardboard box sales signal U.S. consumer spending slowdown. If you do not operate in the retail world, you don't sell any physical products, uh, you're probably not as interested in cardboard as I am, but trust me, uh, as soon as you start selling your first products, uh, you know, you become interested in cardboard. Measurements. How can we get the box slightly thinner? Uh, what kind of cardboard is that? Is it, you know, how many uh, layers is it? All these different things that you never even thought about. But anyway, the point here is that this tells us a little bit of information as to what's happening. In fact, in the article they get into it, you can see U.S. paper mills are scaling back production as big box retailers buy less cardboard, signaling a slowdown in consumer spending. Now, we knew that already. We had this information in a different way. We knew that the retail establishments are basically, you know, they're, they're not ordering as much. The inventory in China has been increasing. So we have seen these different things and the data has all piled up there. This is just showing us the consumer's real spending habits versus expectations. So I can give you hard data and I can give you soft data. There's those two things. But at this channel, I give you both. So you have both of the elements. If you watch like somebody who has vested interest, a lot of the YouTubers or whatever, they have vested interest in, in one, one thing or the other. But I am here to give you the truth. How does that sound? Let's go. We've got more to talk about. Other central banks around the world, they're feeling it. But what happens with the Fed? Okay, Fed does something. The rest of the central banks feel it. Let me tell you, Tunisia central bank extends rate pause as the IMF urges reforms. Chile central bank risks short-term turbulence to replenish foreign reserves. This is something that's been going on other places as well. Their central banks are panicking as the Federal Reserve it is so attractive globally. Like when they increase rates, the, the U.S. debt becomes so attractive and it causes, as they say here, turbulence with other places around the world. Now, let me get into the next aspect here, which is what people are paying you. This is about you. Both the average loan amount and monthly payments for a new and used car have risen over the recent quarters. You could see in the second quarter of 2022, the average loan amount for a new vehicle rose 13% year over year to $40,000. During the period, monthly payments rose from 582 to 667. That's an increase of 14.6%. Used vehicles, average loans jumped 18.6%. Okay, so we're talking about extremes. People are going into the more used, as I'll cover in the next article here, because they can't afford new. You look at the payments people are paying. Are you kidding me? The average payment is in this range, $600, $700 average the debt that's connected with that people are paying more than ever before and then you go to look at the actual inflation stats oh let's look at the car inflation stats because that's part of cpi oh well it's you know three percent it's four percent it's five percent whatever it is on any given day that's never going to determine like the actual reality of the circumstances that you face you want to buy a car today it's more than ever before and of course, the increases are more than ever before. You look at the, you know, the houses, food, electricity, everything, everything pushed to the absolute maximum. Very bad news as a whole. What am I talking about here? Well, when you see this information, it's not just data points. It's not just wow factor. What we can see here is that people are buying what they need. 
their houses, their electricity, their food, those things are all super expensive. What does that mean for all of the other stuff? Oh, now we see the connection. Less retail spending. You can see what's going on with commercial real estate. We need less commercial real estate today. Way too much development in the past. There was a lot of that splurge and happening with individuals. And now things are changing. Things are different. And so the commercial real estate, definitely a factor. And just when you increase debt, you, you kind of bring all this garbage to the surface. Consumers shifting back to used vehicles as inventory shortages continue. Yes, it's inventory, but prices do definitely play a role in that. I want to be very clear about this, okay? This is one that I really need to show you, the decline of affordable housing. And it has an impact on everything, like I said, okay? So here we have it. You could see U.S. home price to income ratio, eight, uh, 1984 to 2021. And looking at that chart, I mean, come on. L like the median household income, it's that, you know, kind of orangey line at the bottom there. Comparing that to the house prices, it's not even, it's not even close. Not even close. And this is U.S. If you were to see the Canadian one, I mean, it would make you sick. It would make you sick. House price to income ratio heading close to six. Almost at six. All right. And in areas like Toronto and Vancouver and Canada, I haven't got the new numbers, but it is just absurdity. It's well, well beyond that. Anyway, the point is, when you when you factor that in, it's not it's not the nominal price, okay? Because they devalue the currency, you know what happens. However, it's not the nominal price. When you when you look at this in a ratio, what does the average person make or the average household make? And then you look at it, what is the average house cost? And you compare these two things. You can compare it via GDP. You can do what any any way you look at it. Inflation as it relates to real estate is significantly higher than where it should be when you compare that to the metrics that they give us. Matter of fact. So we cannot trust their metrics. I'm still going to cover their metrics though. Why is that? It's because they make decisions based on those metrics. So you and I have to know both things. We've got to know all the alternative stats, but we also have to know the mainstream ones. You and I have to put in double the work. Well, all you gotta do is, you know, subscribe to the channel and I'll do that for you, but you still gotta watch, you still gotta be here. Look at this. Regional Fed indicator points to a recession, 100%. Okay, we are at that level, 100%, just one indicator. This is the percentage of the regional Fed manufacturing indices in contraction, everywhere. They're contracting. And that should be just one of the you know, overall factors, but I think it's important to look at a lot of the industries are not doing well. Um, some are though. If you're in the AI world right now, I mean, it's lovely. It's lovely, right? NVIDIA is just raking in the cash right now. I'm sure the insiders are very happy. Trend and outlook is for weaker retail sales. Again, more data. Um, you can look at that in a hundred different ways, but this is just one of those aspects. Okay. And for this right here, I think it's important that you as the individual understand the entire monetary system, how money is debt and debt is money. And if you don't know what that means, I'm serious about that. In fact, click right here, click on this video and I'll see you there.